I don't think I, I, I don't, I still don't think I am conservative in the older meaning of the word. Um, I'm definitely not, you know, if you went and read some particular, pol- you know, political treatise on conservatism, I'm going to disagree with quite a bit of it. At the same time, I find a lot of sympathy for the arguments of preserving something that is worth preserving or conserving that. So, yeah, I was definitely not a radical, definitely kind of middle of the road, average every day, liberal left kind of guy. And I was I was genuinely, like you said, apprehensive. It, it's a kind of an understatement to work with conservatives in a significant regard, um, which has been really an interesting experience because they're exactly the opposite of what the leftist propaganda had told me they would be like. So to get to where we started for a second, when I said to you, oh, you're going to find common cause with some of the conservatives and it's going to be a little scary and all that. Can you just tell people, because I think for people that maybe only know some ancillary little thing about you, you, well, I don't want to put any words in your mouth, but you were sort of, you used to be just a, like sort of a nominal liberal, something like that. Like you're yeah. not, a, you're not a political radical in any way. That, that's the irony. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. In fact, I still describe myself on Twitter to many people's chagrin. So it's a little troll going on there too, as apolitical. I don't mm-hmm. actually find politics that interesting. I mean, I don't really care what Joe Biden's up to. I'm, I just don't find it like, oh, Democrats said this, Republicans. I don't find it interesting. So in that regard, I really am apolitical. I definitely, you know, kind of morally and politi- uh, like policy-wise and tilted to the left. I'm largely not in like the, the strict sense that you would see from the Libertarian Party, but I'm largely Libertarian. I just want people to do what they want to do, leave people alone for the most part, and let's try to organize a society that kind of works around that as a basic principle. And so I've never really been terribly radical. I did lean left for sure, and I was always a little bit annoyed um, with conservatism overall. I don't think I, I – I don't I still don't think I am conservative in the older meaning of the word – um, I'm definitely not, you know, if you went and read some particular, pol- you know, political treatise on conservatism, I'm going to disagree with quite a bit of it. At the same time, I find a lot of sympathy for the arguments of preserving something that is worth preserving or conserving that. So, yeah, I was definitely not a radical, definitely kind of middle of the road, average every day, liberal left kind of guy. And, I was I was genuinely, like you said, apprehensive. It's, it's a kind of an understatement to work with conservatives in a significant regard, um, which has been really an interesting experience because they're exactly the opposite of what the leftist propaganda had told me they would be like all right. the time. Okay, so le- so let's do that then, because flash forward a couple of years, and suddenly I believe it was last December, so December 2020. It was the one speaking gig I did in all of 2020 public speaking at least in front of a crowd, I probably, same for you. I bumped into you at Turning Point USA. Uh, this is obviously Charlie Kirk's event. It's, it's a, in essence, a, well, it's a conservative uh, movement, obviously, but it's very linked to well-known Republicans and all that. And that's where I was like, ah, James, look at this, look at you, two, three years later. What, what have you found as you've talked about critical race theory, as you've exposed this stuff, What have you found each side has sort of shown you? Well, (laughs) the left is either delusional about what's going on or lying. There's no other way to put it. They they claim that people haven't – the people that criticize critical race theory, for example, haven't read it. So that's the new thing. As we're taping this today, it's the number one trend on Twitter right now. And it's because people like Joy Reid from MSNBC are saying nobody even that criticizes uh, CRT even has any understanding of what it is. That seems to be the big move. And even though I'm seeing plenty of people explain it over and over again. Yeah, I I don't think they've read it. Or if they have read it, they've read it with kind of these rose-colored glasses or without an understanding of what the specialized language actually means. You know, you order, you read a word like democracy and you think it means something. Oh, I know what democracy means. But if you don't understand that in a liberationist paradigm that it's not possible to have a true democracy till everybody is equal. In other words, till communism is, is achieved. It's, it's a loaded word. So they don't understand that a lot of the words in these things are loaded and they were intentionally loaded. The right, however, has been a bit um, – facile and its analysis of critical race theory. So it's been very helpful, you know, or very good for me to be able to help them understand it at a deeper level, because for them, they've just been saying socialism, 
And while that's some percentage truth, 20 something, maybe percent, I don't know how to qualify those things. It's not the whole story. It's not the whole story by any stretch. Um, and they have, however, been very receptive to trying to understand more about it. They've been very curious about it. They perceive that something is wrong and, and don't have the vocabulary to comprehend what that is. Whereas what I perceive from people on the left is that they don't want the vocabulary to comprehend it. It's almost like they want their head, if they're good, decent, everyday liberals, not activists. It's like they want their head in the sand to not comprehend it what's going on. And so they constantly get blindsided. It's like I watch some of these people on Twitter, the kind of, you know, left country club, very smart people, I call them. Uh, yeah. It's like watching them step on a rake over and over and over again. It's like <laughs> whacks them in the face. And they're like, you know, why are there these rakes here? Whack. And they do it again. And it whacks them in the face. And like, everybody should be nicer. Whack. And it hits them in the face again. It's, I think it's they very should be more show, Bob. It's it is. It's really it's really horrific. Um, so I feel like there's this very deep, you know, desire to learn more and get it accurate among most conservatives, whereas others are just kind of like, no, it's socialism, the end. And then on the left, there's just straight either delusional ignorance or lying about it, which is shocking. Has that changed your feelings on what a liberal is in a way? Because to me, it exposed a fatal flaw in liberalism that I did not want to see. It doesn't change for me what a liberal is in the kind of classical philosophical liberal sense. What it changes for me is people who identify as the liberal label have – they're largely a country club. They are largely almost at this point a cult that want to believe and have a social identity baked into being left of center um, to where – upholding that social identity becomes much more important than the truth. So when you talk about actual classical liberalism based on enlightenment rationalism, the truth is supposed to be the North Star uh, for almost everything. And so they have diverged and it, it literally is a country club mentality or yeah. a social identity mentality that has captured an enormous swath of that population to the point where it's like I've had conversations with family members and they say things like, oh, well, I really like what that Ron DeSantis says, but he's a Republican, so I could never vote for him. And is, that's the entirety of the analysis is that they don't want to look bad to their, mm -hmm. oh, this is we only ever vote Democrat friends or whatever. And it, it's, that is disgusting. That's something I never would have identified with or respected even in somebody even several years ago when we were having that conversation. Right. Well, and it's and it's anti-liberal. It's anti-liberal. It's, it's, it's anti-reason, right? That, yeah. That's the point. So, so as you then were talking about this publicly, then you start getting invited to these turning point things and uh, onto other, uh, let's say, conservative-leaning shows, and then you go on and you. I've been. I've watched enough interviews. You, you talk about being an atheist. You talk about some of the differences you have as you're unpacking all the CRT stuff, and it seems to me nobody cares, which is very much my experience. No, I actually end up having really interesting conversations with people who want to learn more about my perspective. If I were trying to be subversive, which I have no real interest in doing, but it, it's much more effective to be making friends and coming in in good faith rather than just attacking because they actually want to hear my perspective. Oh, I'll think about that rather than, you know, shut up, libtard. You know, it's been a very different experience. I've had nothing but a very welcoming, friendly, kind, interested experience as I go along, because I'm trying to offer them something that is of value to speaking vocabulary into their experience, that they, they, they know something's wrong and they don't know what. And I found nothing but acceptance, actually. I mean, one, a big red pill experience for me. I, I went to CPAC in 2020, you know, so obviously let me get my devil horns out. Um, yeah. But I went to CPAC and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really want to go, but I was in D.C. and I thought, you know, let's pop over for a day see what's going on. I went one day just for the afternoon. I didn't make a big deal of it. I wasn't part of the conference. Just wanted to walk around and see. And I expected, you know, I was going to walk in from leftist indoctrination. I expected I was going to walk into like the whitest room in the world and all of, you know, all of these things that they've said. And it wasn't that. And before that, I went to this big conservative uh, Christian conference and I expected again. And it wasn't that, you know, I expected all of this kind of like you know, hate against the libs and you get a little bit of that at CPAC, but, you know, hate against this and it's going to be super white and it's going to be anti-gay and it's going to be this and that. And it just wasn't. It was just people coming together, getting to know one, one, one another and the, the amount of actual individualism that each person is who they are bringing what they're bringing to the table was the thing that shone through the most. And I was just 
shocked. I mean, I went home and I had to like just think about this. I was like, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't match what I was told about these evil conservatives, these so-called evil conservatives. And then that's, you know, once you start realizing how much you're being lied to, bricks start falling out of the wall real fast. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about academia instead of nonstop yelling, check out our academia playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.